Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to integrate Microsoft Defender ATP with ConnectWise Manage. In previous videos for Defender ATP, I've mentioned some of the limitations, especially for the MSP space, is the lack of multi-tenancy within the portal. And in this video, I'm going to cover how you can connect multiple tenants to your Manage instance there so you can consolidate alerting across all portals and at least have some type of multi-tenant capabilities here. Before we get into this though, I just wanted to go over the prerequisites not to waste anybody's time. You do need an active Azure subscription in the customer's account. We will be creating a logic app that creates this flow between Microsoft Defender ATP and ConnectWise Manage as a service ticket for new alerts that are populated. And that does come at a cost. It's very small, I'll go over pricing at the end here. It's paid per trigger, but you do need an active subscription to create the resources that I'll be showing you here. Secondly, you need a ConnectWise developer account. So I don't wanna go over this too lightly, but ConnectWise does gate their access for developer access in general. So I'm not gonna be really covering their API documentation, but just know that for this to work, you have to have access to that. You have to have a client ID and you have to know how to manipulate their APIs. Lastly here, this is in a more advanced video than I normally do because we're getting to these APIs and making you know post requests from certain triggers within the environment. So I do recommend that you know Postman or you're familiar with certain APIs, things like that. It's kind of optional no Postman if you know APIs, but for the IDs that we need to derive that you'll need for your own custom instance, you're gonna to wanna to use the tool here to pull that information back. So all those things we need to take in consideration if you feel like that's not for you, then maybe skip this video for right now. But in getting into it here, I just wanna show you the end state of what we're looking at as well too. So we're taking all the alerts that are generated from the EDR capabilities within Defender ATP from a certain customer tenant here. And then we are connecting them with the Logic app to generate a service ticket associated with that company and getting some custom fields that I'll show you guys here as well too, whenever that event occurs. This way you can connect all of your customer tenants, you can get consolidated ticketing here, and you can actually kick off a ticket with some of the information already pre-populated as far as what's going on. So you don't have to go do all that manually. So just reducing steps for you here. Getting to the actual configuration though, we're gonna start in the Azure portal for one of your customers here. So I'm gonna pop into that account. And here we're gonna create two resources. One is gonna be a custom connector that we're using to create our instance with ConnectWise. And secondly, we're creating a logic app which creates this trigger which kicks off the events and passes the information from Defender ATP into ConnectWise. So here, what you'll do is you'll search for the custom connector, and I already have it here because it was recent, but you'll want to click on that if you haven't already. And here I've already done multiple scenarios, but I just want to add a new one here just to show you the full experience. This is pretty straightforward. You can choose a resource group. It could be an existing one, or you could create one specifically for this. Again, I mentioned you need to have an active Azure subscription or else you won't be able to start any of this at all. For the connector name, you can name it whatever you want here. I'm just gonna call it ConnectWise Demo. And location, you can choose personal preference there. There's not really a, a downside or a benefit to either one there. After, I'll just click Create. And this is pretty fast, so I'm not gonna pause or anything. It usually just spins up in a couple of seconds here. And we can go to the resource. So in this section, what we're gonna do is click on the edit button here. And it'll take us through this wizard here from setting up a new custom connection with an API. So for this first section here, we're gonna leave the default at the REST API, and you can leave this JSON file as well too that they default. You can upload a logo for this if you really wanted to for the custom connector. Maybe you want to upload the, the ConnectWise Manage logo or something. I'm not for the sake of time, uh, but you'll see that there when we actually try to connect to the endpoint. 
For this section, the host, if you are just managed by ConnectWise, your instance is with ConnectWise, this will be what you would want to type in. If you're self-hosted, this is obviously going to be custom to your endpoint there as well if you have something that's different than the regular version. But for the actual base URL, that's going to be same across the board. So you can paste that in there. You can click on the security tab. For this, what we're going to do is basic auth. And we're going to click on this, click on basic auth. And then you can define these usernames here, username and password. I'm going to put an API key here because we're going to use the public and private key here to authenticate for this particular integration. So lastly here, we need to go ahead and add actions. And this is what defines the connector actions that you have available when you create the triggers, which you'll see. But I'm just going to call it service ticket. Creates service ticket from alerts. And then the operation ID is unique to you. This isn't something that you have to copy that I'm putting here in any of this. This is all unique to whatever you want to call it. We're going to add a new request here and we're going to make this a post request. Now again, this becomes where you need to have access to the developer documentation, the API documentation there, have a developer account and have been approved by ConnectWise. I'm not going to go into that for the sake of just confidentiality of their documentation, but this is the one API call that you'll be making here for the actual things that we're doing. I'm gonna pop into Postman now as well too and just show you Postman, if you're not familiar, it allows you to manipulate with APIs without actually having to create all this in Visual Studio and, and publish it on GitHub and things like that. So you can start to manipulate things and see what the output is. But for this body, this is what you see in the documentation if you go into the ticket section and the post request. So I'm not gonna post that again for the confidentiality of their access, but as you can see here, there's quite a bit that you can manipulate or push out in a post request, like the board that you wanna push this onto, the service board, the status you want it to have, the company that you want it to be assigned with, the site, the contacts maybe that you wanna to assign to it, maybe a ticket owner that you wanna set up, the type, subtype, and item, the priority, all these things are in here that you can define. So what I recommend is you decide what things that you want to pass in from an alert from the Defender ATP service, and then you just clean this up based off of that. So I've done that here in a very basic view because I just wanted it to be something that was a POC. But here what we're doing is I'm just passing in basic information. So I pass in the board I want it to go on, pass in a status, pass in a company, and I pass in a priority, severity, impact, and initial description. These ones are important as far as the initial description and the summary, because that's where I like to pass in consumable information from the actual alert that gets generated in Defender ATP. And um, as far as what we're gonna do here in this last portion, you're gonna wanna put in the header information and this body information, so when you determine what you're going to pass in. You can copy this and you can paste it in there. That's what will be listed. And you can also go in here and paste in the headers. So the two headers that you'll need here are gonna be the client ID from your developer account in ConnectWise and the content type application JSON. And that's gonna be the same for everybody in this particular case. Client ID is going to be unique, but I just like to pass these in here You'll put in the actual values when we get to the next section here after we click on import. And so with this, you know, we've defined all this. Now it has these values in here. We could pre-populate the values. The one thing I like to do as well too, as you can see here in the body, it just takes your JSON output and it starts making variables out of them. But you'll notice there's two of the same type. Like this doesn't make sense fully. It's going in logical order from the top down in which you had your JSON. But what I like to do is I come back in here and I like to define what this is actually a part of. So you'll notice if I hover over it, it's got the board.id here. And this is the board.name. And then this is the company.id. So I like to go in and I like to edit them. 
And I just like to put that so it makes sense logically when I'm actually going to put in the values instead of trying to guess like what order did I have these in in the JSON. You could put in default values if you know it's going to be consistent as well too. Maybe you're going to post everything obviously to the same company name. So that might be something that you want to do as well too as part of this. But I like to do that as an exercise just to run through and get all this set up because once you do it once, that's it. You know, it's not like you're modifying it over time or anything like that. Once you're done, you can click on update connector. And this will all be listed here now for you to consume. The next thing that you would want to do uh, if you haven't already is generate a public and private key within ConnectWise. This is an API member that you would be creating. I'm not going to go through that because that's pretty basic knowledge. You could look it up, but you want to have that for your authentication. The API member with the public and private key is what we're using to authenticate for this particular connector. So let's get into that as well too. You'll search for logic apps here in Azure. And again, you'll create a new one. So just like the custom connector here, you can you want to go ahead and add it to the same resource group you did for that one. You can name it whatever you like here. And you want to choose region and keep the same location as you did for the custom connector as well. And then you want to go ahead and create. This one's pretty instant too. You can click on go to resource. And it pulls up this page. If you're familiar with Flow or Power Automate, as they're calling it now, this looks very familiar to you, most likely. But what we're going to do is click on Blank Logic App. Here for the trigger, I would just start to search for Defender. And what you'll do here is select the only trigger available, which is when an alert occurs. You'll need to connect to your instance there of Defender ATP with a cluster, customer's global admin credentials. If you haven't already done that in some other type of logic app, that's why it shows for me here that I've already got the connection set up. For the next step here, you'll want to search for Defender ATP again, or it'll give you recommended again if you've done this recently. But for the action section here, we have a lot more going on. But what we want to do is get a single alert. And we're going to pass in the alert ID here as a dynamic value of the trigger. And we'll click on new step. And this is where you're going to type in the name of your custom connector. So in this case, it was CW demo for me. And it, you see here, it pulls up your action that you created as well too. So the service ticket. And so for the connection name here, it's unique to you. You can name it whatever you want, whatever you would like in this particular case. And then for the username and API key here, there's other integrations that explain this, but for ConnectWise, you just want the company ID here and then the plus symbol, and then you paste in your public key. I put this in. So public key goes there, and then down below here, you have your private key, and you just paste that in as well too. For this connection to be secure, again, you wanna store your public or your, your API key somewhere very secure. The biggest thing with the permissions, as far as the API member that you created, if you wanna follow a model of least privilege, just create a custom role within ConnectWise to only be able to write to service tickets. And that would be the most secure way I could see that you would set this up in that case. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, but I'll be right back after I, after I do. Okay, that's in place now, got this connected. Now it's asking us to add a parameter. And so here, if you really ripped apart the JSON output, like I mentioned that you should do to put in the fields that you really wanna consume in this ticket, you should really just be selecting all of these here uh, that you wanna use as far as it goes. But you'll notice like the ones that you did rename come in handy here because otherwise look at all these IDs I have. If I don't look back at the actual content of my JSON output that I use, then I don't know exactly what those are supposed to map to and the call would fail. So just keep that in mind if you want to have this looking really good in the sense of what you'd be passing in. And maybe you created those as static values, you know, that would be the defaulted value if you didn't pass anything in, so you don't have to worry about this here. But the main ones that I want to touch on here, 
The client ID, just like you had in your header information on Postman, is what you'll put in there, and the same thing with the content type. And just as a quick note, with Postman, it's the same authentication or authorization request, basic auth, and then you're formatting here for the username and password of the public and private. So you'll paste those in there, and then you'll fill out the other fields accordingly based off of the company ID, things like that. But again, moving back into Postman, this is where this becomes really important that you have the access to pull this information because if you think about needing to pull the board ID or the, the co company ID or something like that, you really just want to get that information really quickly via this, this type of get request within the particular instance you have and then you know you pull this information up and you have their ID right there you have their identifier you have their name everything that you would need to put into this post request for it to successfully trigger so all that needs to be put in here you can add your own severity and impact and all of that the main ones though in the summary field here you're going to put it in a dy dynamic entry I tried to go ahead and do the alert title plus the alert severity here as back to back. But I did find in testing that ConnectWise only takes in 100 characters. And some of the titles that are, um, are returned from the alerts in combination with the severity produce more than 100 characters and it causes the trigger to fail. And so the it's not very ideal, I, I guess is the main point. It, if it fails, you don't get the reporting. If you don't get the reporting, you never know what happened. So we can't have that, or you would have to put in another trigger within Azure here to alert you on these failures, which you could do if you really wanted that. Because if you want this formatting, as far as the name and then the alert, most of them, like 99% of use cases I found, work just fine, but in any case, I wouldn't want any to fail and not know about it, right? So maybe you just do your own custom nomenclature here for Defender ATP, um, and then you put in the alert severity, right? You could do it that way just to have it make sure that it always comes through and you're not missing anything. For the initial description here, I like to come in and pick the description which is alert description. So those are dynamic ones you put in and the rest of them you just determine based off of what you already know about your ConnectWise instance and pulling in these IDs as well too uh, for what you would like to see. So again, you can manipulate the, the JSON that's gonna be put in here and you can customize this so that when it pulls over and you go through these events, you can click on them and some of these, these rules, you know, you can already have predefined ConnectWise as you're familiar with, like the primary contact for everybody for this company's service tickets is assigned to this person. And that may be sufficient, or you may want to always assign a different ticket owner depending on the type of priority you pass in or something like that. I think it's really cool that it passes this basic information in here and consolidates it so that you can work out of your primary tool that you spend a lot of time in the infrastructure on and also create this multi-tenant level solution as well too. So going back into it here, I'm gonna pop into one of these that I've already done. What I like to do from the trigger standpoint is I'd like to come into this evaluation section here just to test you know, what I made without actually having to wait for something to happen is I'll, I'll go ahead and create a test device and I'll go into the simulation section here and um, look at the ones that I've already done, but then also go to the simulation gallery here, which will open up another tab. And within here, you can just run one of these simulations. You don't have to actually remote into the test device or anything. It'll generate those alerts, and those alerts will trigger the logic apps that uh, you've created here. So you're just making sure that everything runs successfully and you can get alerts on that and see errors and things of that nature. So let me pop into one I already did. And here I'll just select one that I've done before that already has some data in it. And I'll just show you a couple examples here. So you can see the audit trail here when these triggers are succeeding and the identifier and the date and time, things like that. And so I'll go into one that's actually run already. And you can see it here. You can see all the information that actually gets passed in from the alert. 
And these are all the, the dynamic content that you could actually consume. So you don't have to take my template as an end all be all. You could consume other pieces of information if you really wanted to, like the alert incident ID, the status, the severity here, plus the alert category, and all of these things here that you may want to consume differently. And so this passes all this in, and then this body of the output shows you the successful creation of the ticket within ConnectWise and everything that it passed over there. So you can see that. And then on the ones that failed, this is an example of the one I was saying that ConnectWise has a limit of 100 characters in their summary. So I could scroll down here and I could see invalid object, ticket object is invalid, and then code's max length field and it's talking about the summary field and it says it must be a string with a maximum length of 100 characters. So it's it's pretty good there. I mean, the API is pretty good in the sense of the, the types of error requests that you get back, but it's cool that you can consume it here within the actual logic app versus having to, to try to figure out that in, in a different way. So that's everything I wanted to show for you guys here in this particular video. Please leave any feedback, questions, comments below. Otherwise, love for you to like or subscribe to the youtube channel here to, to see more content around microsoft 365 in the msp space and just keep in mind too that this this architecture could be repurposed into other types of alerts across microsoft it doesn't have to just be microsoft defender atp right so keep that in mind if you want to see another video with another type of trigger from another service let me know thanks guys have a great day